Hello everyone. Welcome to Court with Chrissy. I've got a fun, quick arraignment today that ends with everyone's favorite C word. Contempt, of course. So let's get to it. I hope you like it. Court with Chrissy is now in session. If we are on the record this morning for the 28th Circuit Court for Rushford County, and we're taking up the case of People of the State of Michigan versus Jonathan Adam Garn. This is file 23-13601-FH. I'm on the bench here in the courtroom, and joining me here today is Ms. Lindsay Simmon, an agent from the Michigan Department of Corrections, as acting as the probation officer on the file. And joining me today via Zoom from the Washford County Jail is Mr. Garn. Mr. Garn, are you able to see and hear the court, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Garn, we are here today for an arraignment on a request and warrant for a probation violation. I must advise you as to what the counts include, what your rights are, and what your possible consequences are, and then see how you wish to respond. Count one alleges a violation of special condition 4.2. That requires that you must not change your residence unless you first obtain written permission from your field agent. And more specifically, it's alleged that on or about March 17, 2024, you changed your residence from in Manton without authorization of your agent. Counts two, three, and four are each an alleged violation of special condition 2.4, which requires that you must not use or possess any controlled substances or drug paraphernalia. And for count two, it's alleged that on or about April 6, 2024, you possessed methamphetamine. Count three alleges that you, on or about April 6, 2024, possessed drug paraphernalia, a meth pipe. Count four alleges that on or about April 9, 2024, you used marijuana as evidenced by a positive drug test. Count five alleges a violation of rule one not to violate any criminal law of any unit of government. And more specifically, it's alleged that on or about April 6, 2024, again, you possessed methamphetamine. You have the right to challenge these five allegations at a contested hearing. That hearing would occur within 14 days from today's date. At that hearing, the prosecutor would have the burden of proof by a preponderance of the evidence. You would have the right to review the evidence, question and cross-examine any witnesses presented against you at that hearing, as well as the right to present witnesses, evidence, or testimony if you chose to do so. Of course, if you chose to remain silent, nothing would be used against you for that choice to remain silent. You also have the right to be represented by an attorney at that hearing and all subsequent proceedings. If you're found to be in violation of your probation, you will be resentenced on your original offense. In this case, you were originally convicted of possession of the controlled substance methamphetamine, which is a felony punishable by up to 10 years and or up to $15,000. Now that I've told you what the allegations are, what your rights are, and possible consequences, I now need to see how you wish to respond. Before I ask you a question, I'm going to ask Ms. Simmons a question. Ms. Simmons, has the defendant had any prior probation violations in this file? He has, Your Honor, yes. Um, on December 12th, I'm sorry, December 21st during a PD hearing, he was found guilty of three, um, one being a non-technical and two of those being a technical. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. That's important, Mr. Gard, because... Where one is found guilty of a technical violation, there is a sliding scale of potential punishment. Court may sentence a defendant to an additional 15 days for one technical, an additional 30 days if there are two technicals, an additional 45 days if there are three technicals. However, if there are four or more technicals or any non-technicals, the court's no longer limited to that sliding scale. Because you've already had two prior technicals and you are charged here with at least 
uh, three or four technical violations. If you're found guilty, the court would again not be limited to that slide and scale and would only be limited by the maximum amount of punishable for the defense under the law. Now, again, that I've told you what the allegations are, your rights are, and your possible consequences, I now turn to you to see how you wish to respond. The first question I have for you is, do you know if you've been charged with the new offense here in Westford County? I'm not sure exactly what's going on, sir. Nobody's right. telling me nothing. Okay, well, that's why we're here today first. Uh, Ms. Simmons, why don't you tell me what you know, if anything? Yes, Your Honor. Um, it's my understanding that um, the Michigan State Police are going to be submitting that report to the prosecutor's office. All right. So am I to understand that the possession of the meth, like he wasn't arrested on that date, obviously. Correct. Okay. All right. I understand. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Garn, that tells me that you may be facing new potential criminal charges regarding at least one of these alleged offenses. Uh, so now the question is, do you wish to have the court appoint an attorney to assist you, or do you plan to hire your own attorney? I need one appointed, please. Court here thereby enters a not guilty plea on behalf of the defendant and will refer the matter for appointment of an attorney by the Wexford Misaki Public Defender Program. Mr. Garn, are you on probation or parole anywhere else at this time? No, sir. All right, thank you. All right, this matter will now be set for an informal hearing. That hearing will most likely take place next week. An informal hearing is an opportunity where the court orders the parties to appear before it and inform the court as to how the matter will proceed. Will it be dismissed? Will there be a plea? Or will it be set for a contested hearing? All right, in the meantime, we now turn to the question of bond. Ms. Simmons, what can you tell me? What did the defendant score in his PRVs on his original offense? The overall guidelines, Your Honor, were zero to nine, and the PRVs were seven. Okay, so we didn't have too much of prior criminal history here then? No, Your Honor. All right. And uh, what did he, what kind of other cases did he have before? Sorry, convictions did he have before? Were any of them for controlled substances? Yes, Your Honor. He was... <laughs> he was on... Um out of Masaki County for possession of less than 25 grams back in 2020. Um, had some PDs on that case for use methamphetamines. Then he had another case that was actually, he was found not guilty by jury trial in Masaki County for drug okay. abuse offenses. One thing I noted too, Your Honor, in my notes here, while he was on bond, we, we released him early on a PR bond to residential treatment, which he completed. It was two weeks. He did have a bond violation for a positive methamphetamine test. So while on bond, he was allowed to go to a treatment program. Correct. He violated the bond by testing positive, but he did complete the program. Yes, it was a two-week program. Right. And in the probation violation that we dealt with here a few months ago, Yes. Uh, it looks like that involved another positive test at that time. Correct, Your Honor. All right. All right, thank you. Your position on what to do with the defendant today while the matter is pending an informal hearing? Um, in light of the ongoing abuse, Your Honor, and the fact that he had changed residence, um, the issues on bond, I would request that he's held okay. without bond pending the informal hearing. All right. Sir, I had permission to change residence. Okay. She was fully aware of that. I don't know what she's saying, but she didn't know. She was fully aware of that. I had full right. permission to change residence and her her actual advisory to change residence to this residence. All right. Well, again, we're, we're going to deal with that part regarding the hearing. Mr. Garner, are you currently employed at all at this time? Yeah, I'm self-employed and I have jobs scheduled right now. And what is it that you do for a living today, uh, Mr. Garn? I, I just, I'm doing odd jobs, breaking yards, 
um, helping people do whatever chores they need to be helped done around their place. I've got a five acre yard. I'm in the middle of raking right now. And then I got a, a small addition that I've got to help a pe help some people tear down. Uh, Miss Simon, what can you tell me about the allegation for the possession? Was that a traffic stop? Yes, sir. Yeah. He was pulled over by Trooper West for no license plate on his vehicle. Okay. Um, for the most part, he was cooperative. He, he originally tried to kind of elude. Um, he had a meth pipe in his pocket, an additional um, meth was found in the console of the vehicle. Okay. All right. Thank you. So the meth pipe, can I explain? Uh, you've invoked, we've entered a not guilty plea on your behalf. You've asked for appointment of an attorney. Right now, it's probably not the right time to explain that. All I'm really doing is pursuant to a Michigan Court Rule 6.106, which really only applies to free trial and does not necessarily apply here at this stage because we're dealing with a probation violation allegation. The court is merely considering the nature of the offenses here. Based upon the repetitive nature here of controlled substances, uh, both here in this case, both in its prior probation violation and in the previous case for which the defendant was found guilty. I'm sorry, no, I said previous case. In this particular case, the predicate offense for which he was found guilty was possession of methamphetamine. And for prior drug-related offenses, the court raises a concern, now knowing also that the defendant is driving around with allegedly, and I don't make any finding as to guilt today, uh, but the fact that there's a meth pipe or a smoking device and meth in the console, the court is quite concerned for the safety of the defendant, but also the safety of the community. Therefore, the defendant will deny the defendant bond at this time and remand him to the custody of the Westford County Jail pending our informal hearing. Again, based upon my calendar tomorrow, or docket tomorrow, and my docket on Monday, and my docket on Tuesday, and I suspect we'll probably be looking at this wedged in somewhere, maybe on Tuesday, if not Wednesday or Thursday. Thank you. We are adjourned. Bunch of crap. Taylor, you can bring them back. Is anybody there in the jail? You want him back? Yep. Sir, I apologize. Right. It's okay. We're still on the record, though. And we are on the record now again, continuing for uh, People versus Jonathan Adam Garn. Uh, we are uh, ending that hearing. And at the very last moment, Mr. Garn decided to comment, quote, well, that's crap. The court therefore finds the defendant guilty of contempt and will sentence the defendant to 10 days. The court exercises its right to do so underneath the summary proceeding and therefore finds the defendant guilty, as I've already stated, and sentences the defendant to 10 days. Would you, you Thank know what, you. I, what I referred to as that was crap? I don't care, sir. You don't chime in and start and start swearing when you're here in a courtroom session. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. It wasn't, it wasn't customer. I don't know what to do with them at this time.